my name is Emily Cha. And I'm Octavia Taylor, and we are the problem team. The problem our class is studying is the issue of energy waste at our school. Saving energy means saving money. It's important to save money because we can use the money saved for school-related things. Our district might have to cut $40 million to balance our school budget for 2011 and 2012 school year. Saving energy will help us avoid making painful budget cuts like cutting counselors, teachers, sports, etc. To promote energy savings, our school district created Board Policy 3511, the Oak Grove Unified School District Energy Conservation Guidelines. Our basic problem is this. The guidelines are being ignored by many and are not easy to enforce. To encourage energy saving, the district has set energy saving goals. While our school has been asked to save $13,469.82, we have reached 189% of that goal. Mr. Bentland's class thought we, our school could save more energy. Currently, many of, the, many of the suggestions in district's policy are being ignored. We think we can save more energy by unplugging appliances, removing all personal appliances from classrooms like many fridges, coffee pots, microwave, cookery devices, air fresheners, space heaters, etc. Requiring some lights to be turned off in classrooms, requiring teachers to use natural lights, putting more words like must and have to in our policy, removing the weak words from the district's policy such as should, could, or when appropriate. We use SurveyMonkey to learn how teachers at our school use energy. We sent surveys out to all the staff members at our school. On the board, you see these pie graphs. We learned over half those surveyed, surveyed at our school have personal appliances. About two-thirds said they would be willing to give up their personal appliances to save energy. Approximately two-thirds do not use students as energy monitors, and about a quarter of the staff are microwaves. Approximately 85% of the teachers said saving energy was either, quote, very important or important. This chart is an audit of electricity appliance at our school. We calculate how much money personal appliance costs per year. The mini fridges cost about $600 per year. The staff room vending machine costs about $1,100 per year. The single microwave costs about $40 per year. And a coffee pot costs about $100 per year. This personal appliance is being paid with public tax dollars. Do they benefit kids? We, will, we would argue they do not. We think everyone should save energy. One of the main questions is, will teachers want to make changes in their daily behavior? We think they should because many fridges and microwaves don't benefit kids, they waste energy. And they consume money that our school and school district can afford to waste. We the people don't need to pay taxes for wasted energy when it could be spent on educational needs. This is a simple situation. We must save energy. We choose to save energy. We need a strong policy to do this. The existing policy is not strong. The EGUSD energy saving website has plenty of tips. The board policy 3511 is filled with energy saving suggestions, but they're not being enforced. If we made an enforceable school policy based on district, district policy, we think we can save more energy. Now we would like to hand you over to our college or time policy team. Hi, I'm Ray Rodriguez. And I'm Ross Allen. Our first proposed policy is to make the existing board policy 3511 more enforceable. The district policy is not strong enough. It has too many words such as should and not enough words like will or must. People are, quote, encouraged to save energy, but no one is actually enforced to save energy. The policy title itself is weakly worded. Guidelines sound more like suggestions than actual requirements. Our second proposed policy is to create our own school site policy based on districts but we will make our policy more strongly worded than districts. The biggest disadvantage of this is that teachers may not, may not like having our side policy enforced because our policy will limit their freedom. One part of our policy requires teachers to remove appliances that do not benefit a child's education. Teachers and workers may not be happy about it and may not enjoy the work as much. Currently, board policy 3511 states that principal has the power to remove small appliances from office spaces and classrooms generally. This is district guidelines that's been approved, but nobody's enforcing it. We want this enforced. Many people in our community would support our policy. Some teachers would support our policy because it is saving energy, which would save more money. The district has an energy saving program that shares money saved with the schools. The more our school saves, the more money they can earn. Also, energy saved means money saved, which means jobs saved. 
Patriots might also encourage their students to conserve energy. We already have support from from the Associate Superintendent Rock Repair and Facilities, the EGUSD Energy Conservation Manager. We also have support from our principal, Mrs. Crop. We are now like to hand it over to our classmates in the R Policy Group. Okay. Keep it rolling for a second. You know when you say you have support from Mr. Pierce and Mrs. Crop, can you just ad lib in a sentence? We also have support from Tom Gardner, the EGEA president, because we just got that email. It's so new we didn't put it into your presentation. Oh, okay. Keep your feet flat so you're not wrinkling the curtain behind you. Take it from the support part and just run through it one more time real quick. We already have support from Associate Superintendent Robert Pearson Facilities, the EGUSD manager of energy conservation. We also have support from our principal, Mrs. Kropp, and Tom Gardner, manager of the EGEA. The EGEA. President. President. Now I would like to hand over to our classmates in the art policy group. Hi, my name is Nicole Skinner. And I'm Mariana Murray. We think the best solution for this problem is to create our own school policy based on the Algrove Unified School District Energy Conservation Guidelines. Since the policy has not been enforced, our goal for this is to make sure it is enforced. As our colleagues have previously stated, the district policy use, uses too many weak words like should, could, encourage, and appropriate. Our policy does not. Our policy ma mainly focuses on changing behavior and limiting personal appliances. Appliances. Small appliances must be removed from classrooms. Board Policy 3511 says refrigerators and microwaves must be kept in accessible locations for everyone's use. Our, our school staff room has a refrigerator, five microwaves, and two coffee makers. Do teachers really need their own personal mini fridges, microwaves, and coffee pots in their classrooms? Throughout our school, teachers have nine mini fridges. Our calculations show that one mini fridge costs $587.31 a year, when a coffee pot costs $104.05 a year, and a microwave costs about $40 a year. We feel teachers should only bring appliances that benefit students' educational purposes, such as stereos, cameras, printers, scanners, or computers. The board policy 3511 allows for appliances like refrigerators to be kept in classrooms for medical purposes. We would not change this, but we require teachers without medical conditions or teachers who have no students with medical conditions to remove their mini refrigerators, microwaves, and coffee pots from their classrooms. We also would require teachers to unplug all accessible appliances and electric devices at the end of the school day. Currently, some teachers do. Lighting. Our policy will require many things when it comes to lighting. For example, teachers must use natural light as much as possible. Natural light makes students calm and relaxed while saving energy. Our policy also states that all exterior lights will be turned off during daylight hours. Currently, we have lights on throughout the day. We state in our policy that students and staff must notify custodians, office staff, and site administrators when they find lights on during the daytime. Also, we require all students and staff to turn off lights in unoccupied rooms. Research on exterior lighting reducing vandalism and crime is mixed. Our class contacted EGUSD Police Chief Tom Jenkins and asked if we could reduce the number of lights on at night in the interior of our campus. We got a reply at, from Chief Jenkins saying he felt it would be unsafe. Chief Jenkins has said he would meet with us and discuss our concerns about security lighting after we meet with our principal. Thermostats. Energy can be wasted through thermostats. Custodians must check the temperatures if the thermostats are properly set and change it. Students and teachers can help with this duty by simply informing a custodian or site principal. Responsibilities. In order for our policy to be effective, everyone will have a role. For example, our principal must enforce our site principal and help staff focus on conserving energy. To help our teachers with conserving energy, each teacher must select two students from their classroom to be energy monitors. 
Energy monitors unplug classroom computers at the end of the day and in the beginning of the day. Energy, I mean, the teacher's main role in saving energy is to set an example for students, encourage students, and to rely on students as partners in saving energy. They will make sure all of the lights are turned off when leaving the room and encourage others to be energy wise. In the District Energy Conservation Guidelines, it states that principals and the energy conservation manager have the authority and responsibility to create a plan on removing personal appliances from classrooms to a common area that provides access to site employees. The district's policy also states that the associate superintendent regularly monitors division responsibilities to ensure guidelines are being adhered to. This means that the associate superintendent checks on schools to make sure they're following the energy guidelines. But have they accomplished that? No. They do audit energy bills, but they do not physically go out to inspect schools them on a regular basis. We want students and staff to fill this major role. Custodial responsibilities. Some of our custodians at our school don't turn off the lights after leaving classrooms. We want custodians to verify that the lights and computers are turned off nightly. The district's policy doesn't require any of this. Our policy would. Constitutionality. We feel our policy is constitutional. It does not violate the freedom of belief or expression, the right to life, property, and does not overly infringe any, upon any person's privacy. It does not allow government to make laws that violate the basis of race, religion, age, ethnic group, or gender. Our policy does limit people's liberty by telling teachers that they have to remove their appliances, but we are asking them to do this to serve the common good. We will not confiscate any property. However, we will require teachers to take their property home. Our policy is constitutional and it promotes the common good. Now we will hand it over to our colleagues to present the action plan. Hi, I am Robbie Weber and I'm Rand McKenzie. The main activities of our plan is to convince the teachers and the district energy conservation manager to support our proposed policy. To do this, we will do several things. First, we'll present our policy to our school principal, Mrs. Kraut. She is one person who must approve of our policy. If she dislikes it, she, she would likely give us feedback on what to put in or take out. She will help us revise it and make it better. We would like to show it to her first because if we shared it to the whole staff, they might not want to look at the revised policy. We feel Mrs. Crop would likely support saving energy at her site since the more we save, the more we earn back from the school district. They would likely support our efforts because we currently spend over $6,000 a month on electricity at our school site. Next, we will show our proposed policy to Mr. Pierce, Associate Superintendent of Facilities. He has the responsibility to develop building energy teams, according to Board, board Policy 3511. He would likely need to see if our proposed policy is acceptable. Again, Mr. Pierce would likely support our efforts because we can help get the district one step closer to saving $1 million. EGSD's goal for the 2010-2011 school year. Another group we might share this policy with the Elk Grove Educational Association. This is the Union for All or Grove School District Teachers. According to the EGA website, the association represents approximately 300 K-12 teachers, nurses, counselors, librarians, and speech and language therapists. The union president is Tom Gardner. In an email dated June 7, 2011, Tom Gardner stated, and I quote, I personally feel that your guidelines are entirely appropriate, end quote. The union represents the teacher's interest. Saving energy is in the teacher's interest because it saves money. Money saves is money earned, which is money we don't have to cut from the budget. The union reviews our policy. They can tell us if they think it is okay or it's not that good. This will help us revise our policy to make it better. The better our policy is, the more likely the staff and folks are able to approve it. Next, we will show our policy to the full and staff. We will select a team of students to go to the next staff meeting and present our policy. We will ask them to review our policy and provide comments, ideas, or questions. We would hope they like the policy and approve of it. If they don't like it, we will ask them to provide, to provide feedback that can help us revise our policy after, after revision. We will ask the staff to reread the policy and vote to approve or reject it. 
Finally, we need students and teachers to agree to follow our policy. We can make students aware of our policy in a variety of ways. One, we can, get, we can have some students go on morning announcements and talk about energy waste at our school. Two, we can make posters to raise awareness about preserving. Three, we can go classroom to classroom during presentations on, on ways to save energy. Four, we can make videos to show kids that saving energy is very important. Convincing these kids will greatly increase our chance of making this policy complete. Also, it, it gives us more insights on how we should revise the policy. We need to convince not just our principal or our energy conservation manager, but we need to convince almost everybody because you need to have agreement to have a policy. This concludes our presentation. We are now ready for any questions or comments you may have.